Most people laugh when I tell them that their commits are slowing down their web applications. And then they saw Gimbal and had a change of heart. Many web developers feel that web performance optimization is a single time step, so they do it at the end of the software release cycle, just before going to production. Now, is this a right thing to do? Is this getting us closer to waterfall than agile? Is this a recipe for frustration in not meeting goals? Some other developers are going to uh, audit performance earlier in the software development cycle, closer to the beginning of the project. Now that's a little healthier, but there's still a problem. Software changes. A fully agile approach would be continuously checking for uh, performance regression on every code increment or pull request. At Modus, we use Gimbal as part of our software development practice. Gimbal is an instrument or a tool that combines several industry standard tools for maintaining performance budgets. Those are Lighthouse, Axe, Heap, Memory Allocation, Runtime Coverage, Bundle Sizes, and so on. I want to show you how you too can use Gimbal to help ensure that your customers are satisfied with your web product. But before I show you how you can use Gimbal to verify every single code increment or pull request, I want to show you how you can use Gimbal locally. Let's get started with a simple project. I'm going to use one of the code bases that I already use for my web performance uh, videos, and I'm going to uh, assess performance with Gimbal. Now you can install Gimbal in three ways. One is a global installation using NPMG. Uh, the other one is local dev dependency. And a third way is using the Docker image. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. Now, this is my personal preference. I love using the global installation. And here's why. Um, if I put Gimbal as a dev dependency, then everyone on the team is going to have to install it. Uh, not just every single person, but also all the servers, like continuous integration services. Continuous integration services can use the Docker container, and they don't need to install any dependencies. So that leaves me with a global installation. Now, I feel safe with a global installation because Gimbal is going to tell me uh, that there is a new version uh, when a new one is out and available on uh, NPM registry. So it looks like win-win. I'm going to install Gimbal as a global script. Gimbal depends on the final build output because it needs the production build to analyze it. So I'm going to do that right away. Yarn build. All right, that's it. And running Gimbal. Okay, I can see some issues with this code because it's obviously in red. Let's turn off the sidebar for a little bit of extra horizontal space. This application is not very well optimized. So uh, let's come back in a few minutes. I'm going to try to optimize it just so you see the difference in the gimbal report. Actually, I already have that as a branch. So I'm going to check out that branch and rebuild the application. All right, running gimbal again. Okay, it's a little better. I mean, Lighthouse is a lot better. Now, if I scroll up, I'm going to see a very big file, a very big chunk. It's this one, it's number four. Now, I expect this chunk to be big because it's a library that just prints lorem ipsum text, right? That library is big by default, and there's no way for me to make it any smaller. It's just that big, and I need to live with it. Now, I can't live with this if it's throwing errors all the time. So I'm going to need to uh, do some work in the configuration. Now, Gimbal uses industry standard configuration. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it gimbalrc.yaml. All right, let's open this config file. For starters, I'm going to limit the number of audits. So I'm only going to run size checks and Lighthouse. We do this by specifying audits. And I'm setting size and lighthouse. 
Now this is Create React App. And Create React App by default exports files into the build directory. Your application may be exporting to something else. So I want to show you how to set that as well. There is a property called configs and inside I want to specify build directory and I'm going to set it to build. Here's why, because if I show you that build exists and the uh, files are in there, I want to work with this build directory. When I run Gimbal with this setup, I expect to run fewer number of tests. So Gimbal is a little bit faster for me. All right, let's expand this window. And this is interesting. Now I see the same errors, but the number of reports is a bit smaller. Hey, you know what? I really only want to see the failures in the report. I only want to show the things in red. So I'm going to work with outputs. This config has CLI and in the CLI, I want to show only failures. It's as simple as that. It's like speaking English. I'm running Gimbal again, and what I expect to see now is only the red parts of the report. And there we go. I see that this big chunk number four is too big for the threshold, and the build directory is a little bit over the threshold as well. This is the time when I start changing thresholds in the config. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, in the configs, I'm going to add another property it's going to be size now size is only for size checks that this is only for this branch of reports and i already have a few properties that use the glob pattern to specify sizes there it is any chunk is okay to be under 350 kilobytes any runtime javascript is okay to be under 10 kilobytes and index.html, also 10 kilobytes, and then the build folder. Everything that's in the build folder, I don't want to go over 5 megs. Now, this is very useful because size lets you capture um, situations where your JavaScript bundles contain too much of, usually, libraries. You want to optimize your applications so that the app core is very, very small, so that when users land on a page, on a view, uh, that view shows up as soon as possible. This is why your individual JavaScript files should not be too large. Okay, let's go back to terminal. I'm going to expand it a little bit and run Gimbal once again. Great! Everything worked this time. This is great news. Sometimes you want to see the entire Lighthouse report. Now, this is very useful when we run a in, uh, continuous integration environment so we can see that report right away right from the pull request. Now I'm going to add Lighthouse. Okay, in Lighthouse, we have output HTML. And I'm going to use artifacts Lighthouse HTML. Let's give this a go. And the report is not going to change at all, and it hasn't. But what I can do is I can open artifacts Lighthouse. Whoa, this is a pretty good result. Now I see a few issues like enable text compression. Ah, oh, obviously I'm not running this on an actual web server. Now this is just a file that I'm pulling up from uh, my file system. So what I want to do, because I want to, I want these tests to be closer to um, reality. I want to disable some of this server side optimization because I cannot test for this right now and I don't want to. So actually, I can pass Lighthouse config over to the Gimbal config. So I can configure Lighthouse through Gimbal. Now that's a very powerful feature. So let's give that a go. So for this to work, I actually want to skip audits. All right, and I'm gonna specify which audits I wanna skip. I'm gonna skip uses text compression because this is the audit that's showing up in red. Okay, let's run Gimbal once again. And what we are going to see now is that enable text compression should hopefully go off. But uh oh, our best practices have dropped down. Why? How is this possible? 
I should be seeing better results, not worse. <laughs> I actually happen to know why this is happening. When we developed Gimbal, we automatically skipped a few audits. Now that I'm fiddling with the skip audits configuration option, um, I'm actually resetting it. So I'm resetting the default as well. Now I'm going to tell you, and this is why you are here, I'm going to tell you exactly what the defaults are because we're going to need to repeat them in this file. All right, so these are uses HTTP2, redirects HTTP2, HTTP2, and uses long cache time to live. Now these are all server side settings, so I want to test for that right now. Well, that's pretty awesome. Let's test in the browser. I'm going to reload and yes, I have 96. I think it used to be 95. And as we can see, I don't see that red text anymore. You know, this is maybe a digression, but you see this max potential first input delay. Um, this is caused by Google fonts. Loading in the CSS is a render blocking uh, resource, which is why the first input delay is being delayed by maybe 100 or 150 milliseconds. And this is going over the 250 millisecond threshold. Okay, so the next thing is going to be configuring the Lighthouse thresholds. You probably saw that the defaults are kind of strict, very high. And I'm going to change that in the config file. Under skip audits, I'm going to add thresholds and I'm setting accessibility to 94, best practices to 100, performance 94, 95, and so on. Um, let's check this out. Let's change performance to 100, because I know this is going to fail. All right, and I just made it fail. Now, we were able to use Gimbal, install it, run it. We were able to change thresholds. We were able to um, change the output. We were able to create some artifacts as well. Now, what I want to show you is how to add plugins. Now, we have a great plugin called Axe. It's a tool that is used for accessibility. Enterprise uh, software is very accessibility uh, sensitive. So I like to include that in almost every project I work on. So the first thing I need to do is install Gimbal plugin Axe. And I'm going to save it as dev. So I can use save dev or, you know, I prefer just D. You may have noticed that I have installed Gimbal as a global dependency, but this plugin is a dev dependency that's going to be registered with the project. Why? Because uh, Gimbal as a global dependency is just the Gimbal itself. Also, inside Docker, we ship just Gimbal. So any plugins will need to be a part of the project. Think of it as customization. That config file is also a part of the project. So Gimbal Global and Gimbal Docker are the Gimbal engine. Any plugins and configs should live with your project. Okay, we added the plugin and now let's register it with the uh, configuration. So as the kind of last line, I'm gonna add Plugins and then reference the plugin is the same as the uh, package name. But this is not it. I also need to register the audit. I'll go back to the top of the file and I'm going to add X as the additional audit. Now that I have this in place, let me try running Gimbal once again. Okay, this is really good. I mean, it's not good that my application has an accessibility issue, but it's great that uh, it was able to run X audits through the application. And now you know the drill. You know how to set your thresholds and you can see some other options for X in Gimbal's documentation section. If you use the X plugin, I also recommend using Axe's Google Chrome extension. Okay, believe me that the hard part is done. You are able to run Gimbal locally and now all you need to do is work with your CI environment to run Gimbal on every single pull request. If you go to Gimbal's GitHub repository, and the link is down below, uh, make sure you navigate to our CI section. In this section, you can see that we already have uh, sample configuration files for some of the uh, most successful CI services. For example, Bitbucket, CircleCI, 
GitHub, Travis. I'm going to open Circle CI and show sample uh, configuration. And you can see that the only thing we needed to specify is the location or the name of the gimbal's Docker image. And that's it. The Docker image or container is going to pick up the configuration file and run Gimbal on your CI service. This is all you actually needed to run Gimbal inside your CI environment. One of my favorite things about GitHub integration is that you can have Gimbal report findings as a comment in a PR. Take a look at this. Gimbal comments with report findings as a modus bot right inside the GitHub pull request. Now we can set that up without any configuration. We just need one simple environmental variable. And this environmental variable is your personal access token for GitHub that we store with uh, CI environment. I definitely uh, suggest that you use personal access tokens that are unique to each project just for security purposes. We are so happy that we were able to open source such a tool that has a proven record for helping application maintain phenomenal performance. Now these are the applications that cannot afford anything less than stellar user experience. You are free to take Gimbal with you. I hope it's going to help your projects, but I also invite you to help and contribute. Contributing is so easy, as easy as giving us your feedback. Even if it's, hey, this worked well, or it didn't work. Now we are still learning, and we would love to learn from your experiences to make Gimbal even better tool for optimizing even faster and better web applications. You can comment in the comments below or post an issue inside our Gimbal GitHub page. If you made it this far, well, it looks like you like this content and there is more where this came from. This is a great time for you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. This is the best way for you to support us.